what's going on? How y'all doing today? So this is going to be about Prince's 1999 album. Now, word came out there's going to be a heavy dose of a remaster that's coming uh, at the end of the year, in November, December, to commemorate the 37th year anniversary of this particular album. And this was the album where I always said Prince found his sound. I always said Dirty Mind is when he found his voice. Controversy is when he was finding his groove. But 1999, the whole thing came together. And I always say that that's the holy grail of the Prince Roger Nelson experience with the whole tag. This album was something else. And again, when the five CD once DVD comes out later in the year, or that's 10 vinyls plus a live concert, which was recorded in Houston. Remember that back in the day. Uh, it's going to definitely tell you how a cat with the sound and the vibe uh, was very influential for his day and his time. And he definitely left a mark with us. And this album was the one where he grew probably his funkiest album, the closest thing to a funk album that he came to because he had a real futuristic thing going with the synthesizers. He was definitely channeling craft work and Gary Newman and also what was going on with R&B, you know, being from Rick James and uh, Gap Band and different other things. And also, you know, just holding his own with what he was doing, but he really came into his own. He had like a real hybrid of things going on. The title track alone was like really futuristic for back in the day to hear a song called 1999 back in the day was like, wow, that sounded like something like you hadn't heard at that time. That was something else. And then, you know, he had the pop, he had the pop blend, what he did with Lyra Corvette, which was a catchy song. You can always get down with the sexual metaphor with the car. Des Dickinson on the guitar. And he did use some people from his various operations, you know, in the groups. And he did credit it for the future. If you notice it right there in the picture with the end of revolution. But this was mainly a solo effort. Don't get it twisted. And don't let revisionist history tell you otherwise. Prince still out his stuff. He was, he, regardless of what he may allow to be played and whatnot, he still was the person that was coming up with the ideas and putting it out there. So he had his rockabilly phase, rockabilly phase with um, Delirious and then Let's Pretend We're Married, which I always said was like a play on words to Marilyn Monroe's seven, seven year itch and the whole synthesized groove of that. Um, what I dug, of course, you know, getting down with uh, DMSR, which to me, if you listen to early Prince, that was like a, a trademark of him. Dance, music, sex, romance, because that was what he was about. He was like in that, along with his spiritual element, but that's where he was like really capturing himself with that groove and that attitude. And that's what gave Prince that type of edge and rawness. You know, he was, um, that's what his trademark was. And you knew when he did DMSR, that was a trademark. Um, Obviously, Free was one of his, you know, he had one of those type of, he always had like these patriotic type of anthems and styles and songs. So that was another thing that was part of what he was about as well. Get the Automatic. Automatic was a tight synthesizer bass groove. Um, took on a, a, a whole characteristic for its own, but it was arguably the tightest groove on the, on the album. It's, it had, a, it really, it really was like a, you know, he really built on something with that attitude. And it was, you could feel it on that song, that urgency. He had a lot of that going on with this record. He was definitely coming into his own with style and sound. All the Critics Love You, New York, very bold. One of them songs that you uh, you have to listen to in its entirety to understand the politics of what's going on and so many factors involved. And sometimes Prince would do a play on words and could you catch up with it? Did you get what he was saying? You know, it's up to the listener. Something in the water does not compute. Hmm. Pre-disposition of dealing with relationships and people and the way things can be. And sometimes they go one way and sometimes things come out another. And that was a pretty self-explanatory song. Lady Cab Driver. Raw to the bone. Much respect to Jill Jones on the voices and everything. One of them songs that you can see his venting and frustration. And he went autobiographical. He alluded to his brother Dwayne in there as well. It had a tight, chunky rhythm. That guitar was clucking. That clock was working. You felt all of it, you know. And the whole Jamie Starr and effect between this and DMSR, you could definitely feel it. You definitely knew he was on to something with that attitude. International Lover, the best song at the time that the time didn't do, that Morris Day didn't get down on. But, um, you know, with the musicality of it, it was a straightforward R&B cut. And it was definitely in a vibe. And he definitely was touching on all the bases. 
You know, one thing about this album is like it has a throwback 60s vibe by looking at the album cover. And when he mentions, look at all you hippies, ain't as chic as, chic, chic, chic as me. You know, he had a certain flair, but he was definitely uh, creating his own purple hide, his own rude boy, the whole nine. He really was, you know, he was one of those those artists that you knew was going to have his identity, his music, his style, his vibe. And you can't say that about a lot of artists. Past or present, not not since per se. Prince definitely was making a statement with this record. So, um, produced, arranged, composed, the, and performed in the concepts and the themes. And I always said this was Prince at his peak as a producer. I think between '82 with what he did on this album and what time is it for the time and Vanity Six's record, he definitely was feeling himself as a producer. He was definitely, I think, he peaked to me, um, and he definitely. Uh, hit his apex and then of course we, the b-sides ain't on here because you can make a when you get that disc set with how come you don't call me anymore and irresistible and um you know those other songs honey told all that he was definitely just hitting it hitting the, hitting it out the park with the sounds and the vibe and the groove he was on he was definitely on something with this record and um you know he definitely was making a statement record along at that time, with what Michael Jackson did with Thrill and Rick James did with Street Songs and Lionel Richie's debut album and Ray Parker Jr. You had some heavy competition in the bars back then. And uh, Prince definitely made his presence felt as an artist. And this is one of those albums that in his catalog, it still stands tall. It's still a strong record. And he, with his sounds and his style, you can see it influence a lot of different genres and artists from the, from the, definitely on, onward. So... Uh, just a little mini take about Prince's 1999 record review. And like I said, coming at the end of the year is going to be a bigger set that's going to expand on this. But you'll understand why this was such an important record and what it meant to him. And it took him to another level as an artist. Feel free to give me your thoughts and takes about Prince's 1999 album. Uh, what are your favorite songs? What do you remember? Etc. Hit that like it to subscribe when the bell rings is a new video. And party like it's 2019, but enjoy the past. Peace.